QuickBooks Desktop 2023, adjusting entry, unearned revenue, customer deposit. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the homepage to the gray area, go into the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial profit loss, P&L income statement, change the range. 010123 to 022823, that being the cutoff date. 0228 that is let's go from the totals bring it to the months it's month by month side by side customize up top fonts and numbers and bring the font size up to 14 as has been our custom okay yes and okay reports drop down again this time you know where we're going the balance sheet that's where customize it from 010123 to 022823 and then we're going to go to months as well once again fonts to the numbers and bring it up to the customary 14 okay yes indeed okay that's the setup process that we've been doing every time we got the cutoff date for february 28 we're now doing adjusting entries related to accounts receivable but this time not related to an invoice that was entered in the wrong period but instead related to unearned revenue now note this adjusting entry will be different than the normal adjusting entry that you might see if you take accounting courses and you have the normal adjusting entry related to unearned revenue let's do a quick recap of it and explain why that might be the case in practice in quickbooks let's go back to the home page noting that normally when you have the revenue cycle either you get paid at the same point in time as you do the work and enter a sales receipt or possibly you can enter a deposit form which records revenue at the point in time that you uh, enter these items or you have an accrual process in which case you have to do the work first invoice the client and then get paid in the future however there are some businesses where we get paid first and so a business that always gets paid first is something that becomes more and more relevant these days like a subscription model which used to be for like magazines and newspapers but now a lot of times uh the the programs or applications are such that you get paid like a year in advance and then you provide the programs in that case then you would in in theory you would have to put the actual money in place first and then record the invoice after in other words uh, if you collected money on a subscription basis but you have not yet provided them the subscription then you haven't really earned the revenue on an accrual basis and therefore should be putting it on the books not as revenue but instead as a liability because you owe them something in the future hopefully not money but rather access to whatever you told them you were going to give them for the year such as computer application or magazines or whatever and then and so it's it's a little bit backwards so so then we have to deal with this unearned revenue kind of situation the other place you might see that in is like rental property where you where you got the security deposit that you're going to be dealing with which is a similar kind of thing and then you also might have something where in our case we sell large customary items such as guitars if someone asks for a custom guitar for like a plaid guitar or something we don't have it so we're gonna we're gonna go and ask our vendor to give us that customary guitar but we want a down payment up front once again we get paid 
before we actually create the invoice. Now, normally when you do that, if I if I was on just a debits and credits standpoint from a reporting standpoint, then on the balance sheet, you should be increasing a liability for the fact that you owe money in the future and the other side going to cash. Or in other words, more easily seen, I think, we would deposit the cash into the into the cash account and the other side should go instead of going to revenue a liability account why because we haven't earned the revenue we expect to earn it in the future that account customarily called unearned revenue but it could be called like customer deposit depending on the situation and so on and then periodically monthly for example we might go into the unearned revenue account and determine how much of that revenue has been earned for example if it's a subscription basis we would then say okay this is how much of the subscription we have given access to and therefore we're going to decrease the liability and record the other side then to the revenue uh, account periodically that the problem with that system within accounting software however is the fact that the customers are tied to the accounts receivable account if i set up a liability account called unearned revenue then i don't have the same customer ledgers related to it so especially in a situation where we have like this deposit situation where I've got a prepayment deposit and I want to attach an invoice to it as opposed to a situation where like all of my revenue is prepaid because I have a subscription model, then I want to be able to go into here and tie out the invoice that I create in the future to the deposit. It's more difficult to do that if I've got a, a separate account for unearned revenue. So we talked about the couple different methods that you could use in order to, to deal with this problem uh, when we, when we uh, put in a security deposit. So if you wanna go back, uh, if you have access to the prior section or course to take a look at that, uh, you, can, you can get that idea in a little bit more detail, but just a quick recap on it. If I go to the customers dropdown, customer center, note that we had a couple different formats that we can do the prepayment on. But from the bookkeeping standpoint, the point is that if I have a payment, even if I got the payment in advance, I would like to see it in here as a payment that I can later tie out to the invoice so that I can connect the invoice to the payment. That's kind of what I wanna see from the accounting side of things. And it makes perfect sense then from an accounting side or a bookkeeping side of things to enter the receive payment first, which, will, which QuickBooks will create a credit for, meaning create a, an amount that can then be applied to the invoice. Let's see that by going to the reports dropdown. I'm gonna to go to the reports. I'm gonna to go to the customers and receivables, and we will then go into the customer balance detail. And let's increase the size of this thing. So we'll go to the, to the header and footer. Actually, what am I doing header and footer? I'm gonna to go to the fonts and numbers, change the size. Let's bring it up to like 14. Okay, yes, okay. I'm thinking 14 is kind of large, but we'll just hopefully that, that'll be okay. We will expand these out. So there we have it. Now I'm gonna make this as of the cutoff date, 022823. So this report should tie out in theory to what is on the balance sheet, 227150 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet which is 227150 as of the cutoff date. If I go back into the customer balance detail, however, uh, I have a couple items in here that look like negative receivables, which doesn't make sense. If I go down here, for example, this 200 right there, for example, is negative. How can that be? How can I have a negative receivable from, from Eric Music? Well, it's a negative receivable because we actually owe Eric Music something. We owe Eric Music the guitar that they pre-ordered and gave a $200 deposit on, or we owe them the $200 back. Therefore, it shouldn't be a negative receivable, but rather a positive liability. But again, if I put it into a liability account, it wouldn't be able to track in here as a credit. Notice it's a credit because it's a credit in an accounts receivable account that I can then, which lowers the, usually lowers the account, but puts a negative balance here, which I can then apply to an invoice. So from a bookkeeping standpoint, it works perfect. 
Uh, but but again, from a reporting standpoint, it's not quite right. We had another one down here, I believe. Is that the only one we had? I thought there was another one. Oh, there it is. The 250 right here for Sam the Guitar Man. So those two uh, actually are understating my accounts receivable and should be reported uh, as a liability. The liabilities are also understated. So I sh that's the adjustment that we're going to make in this case. Notice if I go up to this one, Anderson Guitar, we did the same thing here with the with the $300. Uh, and then we made an invoice that and applied the credit to it. But this one's not a problem because even though we got the prepayment in advance, we then entered the invoice in time or before the cutoff date. So after the invoice is entered, then we're good. No, no problem. The only reason these two are a problem is because as of the cutoff date, 228, we still have this, this negative receivable. So that means the system works great from a bookkeeping standpoint, but there's this timing difference. And on a periodic basis, whenever I do the reporting, I'm gonna go in here and make the adjusting entry. Now notice if you're a small business, then you might, you might not need to do this. If you're a Schedule C type of business, for example, then you might just be reporting a Schedule C on your taxes, and that's what you're generally doing. These are balance sheet uh, kind, of, kind of issues right now, and so they're not gonna affect the income statement, so you don't really, if it doesn't bother you from a bookkeeping side, you might not need to do it. But if you wanna report things you know, exactly properly, for financial reporting, or if you have a you know taxes that you need to report the balance sheet for, like a partnership or an LLC or something, then uh, in th then theoretically you should increase the the receivable and then increase the liability. So that's what we will do here to make it correct on an accrual basis. So I got 200. I'm just going to go through here and see if I have any of these negative receivables in this report. Here's the 250 plus the 250. So those are the two I need to account for. So what needs to happen? The accounts receivable needs to go up by that amount. Now I could do that with a journal entry and I also need to record a liability. I could do that with a journal entry company. I could go down and make a, a journal entry or I could, since there's only two accounts affected, I can do this with a register. So let's do that and we'll look at the journal entry after. Lists chart of accounts. Now I could use the accounts receivable register but because it has the, the, the customers kind of tied to it for the subledger, it gets a little bit confusing to use that one. So since the other side is also a balance sheet account, I'll use the unearned revenue as the register. Now here's the unearned revenue. We set one up in a prior presentation. If you don't have it set up, you want to set it up as an other current liability. If I right click and edit it, we can take a look at it. So right click and edit. So it's set up as an other current liability, unearned revenue account. And then I'm just gonna double click to go into the register. It's a liability. I'm gonna have it go up as of 228, the cutoff date. And it's gonna be increasing by, we said 450. And then the other side is gonna to go to accounts receivable, accounts receivable, and it's gonna be an ADJ entry. Now QuickBooks won't let me post this, however, because I'm posting to accounts receivable and QuickBooks is going to say, no, you need to post to a customer or your subledger is not going to match. So let me just show you if I sit tab, it says, please choose a customer when using accounts receivable. So I'm going to say, okay, then I can't add a customer unless I choose the splits line. So I can split it right here, which gives us the customer field on the right. Now you'll recall there were two customers that were impacted that made up that 450. I could use those two customers, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to mess up and have journal entries in their activity for the bookkeeping side of things. There's a couple ways I can deal with this. One, I could say maybe I set up another accounts receivable account and, and, and I post to it so I don't mess up the sub ledgers for the customer detail. However, that's kind of a problem because I don't want to set it up really as another accounts receivable type of account, just the name accounts receivable, because if it's an accounts receivable type account, then QuickBooks is going to set up a whole nother uh, customer sub ledger for it, which is also going to confuse things. So I don't want to do that. I could set up another account that's called accounts receivable for adjusting entries. 
and make it an other current asset account, but then it won't be exactly next to the accounts receivable account. Uh, or maybe I'm gonna say over here, I use the fact that I'm just gonna apply this to another customer. I'm not gonna use the actual customers because I don't need the detail of the customers. I just wanna choose a default customer. So QuickBooks lets me record it. So we made one called ZZZ adjusting entries, which is gonna be at the bottom. Hopefully doesn't bother the bookkeeper. So let's go ahead and then say record it. I'll show you what I mean here. And we can go then to the uh, chart of accounts, not the chart of accounts, not that. Actually, I could, I could double click on this just so you could see the journal entry. Here's the journal entry. I'm gonna copy the adjusting entry into both sides. And so again, this is different than what you'll see in accounting courses because we're kind of solving a different problem, approaching it a little bit differently than the standard book problem for unearned revenue. It's just to be aware of that. Save it and close it, save it, and then closing that out. And then uh, let's go back to the balance sheet. So now if I go into the balance sheet as of the cutoff date, double clicking on it, we're now at the 23-5-151-50 after that adjusting entry. And that was an adjusting journal entry that we put in place. The other side, not going to the income statement, but rather the balance sheet, which again is different from the accounting uh, way, you know, the, the accounting course problem that you would see related to this. And we made unearned revenue. There it is. Unearned revenue for 450. Liability account goes up because we owe the people this money. But this liability account isn't tied to the sub ledger for the customers who are the people that we owe. <laughs> so if I double click on this, there is the 450. Closing that back out. If I go back up to the AR, AR here, notice the sub ledger has been changed too. going back to the customer detail. If I go down to the bottom of the sub ledger, it's now still tied out 23,150,150, ties out to the 23,150,150. It has to tie out because QuickBooks forced me to add a customer. And instead of adding the customer up top, like Eric Music, which would result in us having that detail in Eric Music, which would kind of annoy the accounting department, I made another customer down here so that all that junk is just gonna go down here and net each itself out in this adjusting entry customer uh, at the bottom. So in other words, if I go into the customer center, then, and they're working on Eric Music, and they enter the invoice, they're not gonna have this funny adjusting entry in there that's gonna mess them up. It's not gonna tie out to an invoice. Instead, it's down here in this other account, which is still kind of annoying, but hopefully not overly so. So closing that back out, uh, then if we, go, if we go back to the balance sheet, so that looks good. Now, this works perfect for the cutoff date as of February 28th. But now I have this, this 450 on the books and it's, and so uh, I don't really want that there going forward. I just want that to be the case as of the cutoff date because it's proper as of that date. But what the accounting department was doing was fine. It's just, there's this timing difference that we had to fix. So that's this timing difference that I can, I want to reverse it as of the first day of the following month. So we're gonna do a reversing entry to just reverse what we did to hopefully get us back to where we were before due to the fact that there's nothing wrong with what the accounting department is doing. It's just there's, there's this timing difference that we wanted to account for. So next time we'll do an adjusting entry in essence, reversing this back out. Let's see what we have thus far, journals, uh, accounting and taxes. Let's take a look at the journal report and make it as of 02-28-23, the cutoff date to 02, that's not 02, 02, 28, 23, and customize it. We'll say that uh, we're gonna go then to the filters to filter to the journal. Let's transaction detail and let's just look at the journals and then fonts and numbers. Let's bring that up. Let's just do 11 this time. Okay, yes, and okay. So here's all the journal entries that we have entered thus far as of the cutoff date. These are just the adjusting entries because no, no other journals were entered as of this time. The last one we did was that adjusting entry for the 450, which is down here. We will do a reversing entry for it 
So if I go to one period up, the next day, we will add this to the reversing entry uh, uh, column here. We'll have a, a reversing entry for it. This is one of those adjusting entries that we need a reversing entry for. Let's go to the reports drop down, check our numbers in the accounting and taxes trial balance, changing the date from 020228. Let's not 01 to 0228 to uh, 23. What, what are you doing? 010123 to 022823. There. For crying out loud. And then fonts and numbers, changing it to 14. Okay. Yes. And okay. So here's where we stand as of the cutoff date, that being 228. So you can check your numbers, see if those are tying out. Let's bring it on up to 331 just to include the reversing entries. So 033123. Uh, this is including the reversing entries thus far, what we have done thusly far. So as, as of now, and that's where we stand two legs of the debits and credit.